Greetings to everyone. My name is Tendi, and I team up with Sari Mulyani. And in this very opportunity, I'd like to present the article entitled China's Identity and Cultural Approach in its Economic Engagement in Asia. And before I start further, I'd like to mention that this writing is conducted in effort to fulfill one of the themes available on IVCC TVA 2021, Tradition and Culture. First, we have the introduction. The decade of 2000 saw the significant step of China's political and economic maneuvers from once relatively close to become more open. The forming of Chiang Mai Initiative in 2000, followed by the cooperation between Bank of China, Korean Exchange Bank, and Sumitomo Mitsui Bank in 2003 can be seen as a clear-cut maneuver of China's approach to the regional system. In 2014, China launched Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank that will serve as an alternative source to Western funding in terms of development in Asia. The latest saw China's commitment in helping development by providing loose funding for countries in the region. The rationality behind all this economic maneuver is that China realized the importance of creating international unification in a peaceful way through harmonious cooperation with democratic countries and any other countries around the world. China is willing to dedicate itself in participating and providing assistance for Asian countries that have, uh, that have experienced deficit and help to prevent the events of economic and financial crisis. China's ventures in regional system as a part of its global maneuvers has coined the terms of China rise, where it puts China as dominance in the system. Although China's ventures in the regional system, economic system were intended in the optimistic sentiments such like economic restructuration and infrastructure development, criticism and debates also adhere to the events. Some embrace the phenomenon calling it as a positive change to the country. It is believed that China's involvement in international uh, system is a stimulus to the country's recognition of democracy. But some skepticism straightforwardly believe that the phenomenon of China rise is a definite threat. They consider China's economic dominance will lead to the consequences of military dominance. For the very least consideration, there have been increase in China's uh, military budget as impact of its economic increases. Regardless, the debate around China's maneuvers, the, uh, the country has its own vision in divining the motivation behind the engagement in Asia. Rooted from long history of local wisdom, Confucian, China seems to understand exactly well its destiny and mandate to become the light of the world and thus affect the way it strategizes their path to global dominance in a global system by building relations with countries, especially in Asia. And we have Problem statement. The vast development in China has given the confidence for the country to step as a global dominant power, depicted in its economic maneuver through economic institutionalism in Asia, where it generates the notable term of China rise. There has been debate in seeing the phenomenon. Some say that China's openness and involvement in global system can be seen as a stimulus to country step into democracy. But some skepticism consider China rise as a threat, where it is believed uh, that China's economic growth will lead to the consequences of military growth. Trying to walk aside the traditional debates, this writing will try to explore the alternative approach by discussing the influence of China's cultural and identity in Confucian wisdom and understanding the motivation behind China's engagement in Asia. The beliefs of mandate from heaven stimulates the motivation in China's political way that drive the country to seek their place as a light of the world and those construct the vision of becoming the leader of the global society where they start by becoming the leader in the region. The objectives of the writings. This writing will discuss the constructive approach in understanding the motivation behind China's engagement in Asia, which highlights the idea of identity and culture in the implementation of foreign policies. In the research methodology, the article uses illustrative methods explained in social research methods by Newman published in 2000, where the theory is applied in a concrete historical event or social settings, and the evidence obtained in uh, data are intersected with theory with the help of model and analogy to reach the appropriate interpretation regarding to the phenomenon research. Now we reach uh, to the result and discussion. 
At first, I overview the theoretical approach. One of the most prominent paradigm in the study of international relations is constructivism, which highlights the importance of the consideration of identity and culture as basic idea in the political thought. Constructivists perceive that one's identity contributes in establishing its interests. As Alexander Wen explained in his conception of identity, to have an identity is simply to have certain ideas about who one is in a given situation. Therefore, understanding our identity means understanding our interests and means to achieve the interests. To support the idea, Barnett in 2005 stated that no one understands its interests unless it understands its identity in a given situation. And here I uh, present you the illustrative uh, pictures uh, to at the explanation about the theoretical approach that I used in the writings. Through the simple illustration, it is known that the concept of identity as an element of analysis in constructivism has played a significant role in forming the interest of one. The illustration of the relation of concept in continuous cycle depicts the nature of uh, the relations. It means sometimes it is unclear whether identity precedes the interest or in other respect, the interests come before and those effectively shape, uh, shaping the suitable identity. As in China's experience, the illustration of the continuous cycle generates the possibility of thought whether the cultural identity of Confucian genuinely formi formulated China's political motivation or otherwise its long term of interest that actually shapes uh, the needs of identity so that uh, Confucianism is revived and adopted as national identity. Understanding Confucian in China's political identity. Confucian has become the part of the uh, China's political identity for over a thousand of years. It also becomes the guidelines for the emperor in dynasties. To differ from Western liberalism that promotes individualism, Confucianism emphasizes the value of equality, communitarian, recognition to authority and hierarchy, and its control to individuals. This value based on some of the principles lies on the value of humanity, love, and affection that have the nature of anthropocentrism and pragmatism with the emphasis of the aspect of piety, honor, honor, and virtuosity. Confucianism also values the importance of education, which considered a substantial element for civilization advancement. Confucianism heightened the concept of superiority, which served as a grace from heaven. The Chinese people believe that all human beings are under the guidance of the heaven and that the emperor or the leader holds the responsibility to guide its people. The term all human being has literally universal meaning. Manspa and Rafferty wrote Chinese or not or Chinese or a barbarian or non-Chinese. Both must be treated in an equal manner under the superiority of China's leadership. This is the interpretation of Manda to become the light of the world. The responsibility of government once mentioned by Confucian and re-explained in Jeffrey Show 2008, where he wrote, if we govern the country with a thousand of chariots, we have to be honorable and trustworthy. We have to make advance of the economy, compassion to all people, having them work only in appropriate, in appropriate season. This leads to three teaching for governments. One, authority of the government to its people. Two, the well-being of all people, and three, equality for all people. The characteristic of Confucian, as explained in Manspa and Rafferty, we have uh, some of the characteristic, that is, the importance of harmony of all humans instead of individual achievement, those the cooperation among others is considered valuable. 
and then we have the sense uh, of strong kinship in social life. This has the meaning that social organization has to be run under the value of family. And then there are five models in social relations inspired by relations in family. Father and child, husband to wife, king to ministers, old sibling to young siblings, and friend to friend. This relation illustrated common character which is hierarchical aligned except the friend and friend relations. This hierarchical can be interpreted as the superiority of the state to individuals, and it has been the duty of individuals to bow to the state. It also interpreted as the responsibility of the state to fulfill the needs uh, in economic and development and to ensure the public prosperity, just like the responsibility of the father to his family. From those three characteristics, we can draw three keywords, responsibility, hierarchy, harmony, and cooperation, which explain as following. Responsibility view as the philosophy of China's leadership. The fiction from father to child relation represents the responsibility of father to his child, and it's creating the responsibility of the child to obey the father. In a simple respect, the state has responsibility to fulfill the needs of the nation and the people have to obey the state. Hierarchy and superiority. China's government has to lead the economic growth massively for the sake of prosperity, which is viewed as the privilege of heavenly mandate. This affects the foundation of China's political economy, where they believe they have to achieve the equality of advancement in terms of civilization, even surpassing the West. And then we have the harmony and cooperation that motivates China to build harmonious international community through cooperation. Confucian also promotes the search of knowledge through education, which considered important for the civilization advancement. This also helped the revolution in technology and industry. China's identity and cultural approach in its economic engagement in Asia. Practically, the concept of responsibility oriented to the commitment of the effort to fulfill national needs related to China's uh, economic institutionalism in Asia. Responsibility depicts the motivation of the country to forge cooperation in international system which serve as tools to achieve its national interests. Responsibility talks about the fulfillment of national prosperity as the priority of the state. The concept of hierarchy and superiority is understood both as the reflection of the relation between state uh, to state and state to people, whereas in the relation of state to state, the conception put China superior to partnering countries. Superiority also shows how much China's government recognizes significantly the needs of the nation and therefore government holds the right to become the central position in policies carried to the agenda. In another respect, superiority also means that China has to be the noblest entity to others. This belief derived from the identity of the China as the center of the world of civilization, which is the mandate from heaven. China has to take the lead to the global fight against imperialism within capitalism. Harmony and cooperation motivates China to treat other countries as equal partners, Although the partnering country is sometimes labeled as vile and corrupted, this is understood as the implementation of friend-to-friend -friend relations. For example, bilaterally, China has been actively offered assistance to Cambodia, Myanmar, and Philippines with the very minimum condition, even without penalty for any possibility of breach. Within these concepts, China puts its commitment to treat the partnering country as a friend and will not do the lecturing 
or interfering as demeanor to others. China will console, not conquer. And as our conclusion, according to Confucian teachings, to achieve economic superiority and global dominance is nobility, which is destined by heaven. This has been the beliefs of China's people for centuries and become the guideline in China's political thought. There are three keywords drawn from the characteristic of Confucian teaching. Responsibility, hierarchy and superiority, harmony and cooperation. All three drive the motivation and formulate the strategy of China in its engagement in Asia. That wraps up all the presentation from our team. Thank you very much and have a very good day.